Homecoming in Carbondale this weekend at Saluki Stadium tomorrow as the Salukis welcome in the number two team in the country, the North Dakota State Bison. Here with your Saluki radio crew with the coach Pat Poor, Mike Trude. I am Luke Martin. Mike, this has been a series since the Bison have joined the league. They've won 12 of the 14 meetings. And you look at this team this year, it arguably may be their best offense that they have had. Cam Miller, most rushing touchdowns in the history of the Valley in terms of quarterback play. He also hasn't thrown an interception in 12 games. It, they are so impressive offensively this year. And I think what's most impressive is the way they just hold on to the football. They are, I mean, time of possession is ridiculous. And they're ending their possessions with scores. I mean, they've been incredible in the red zone. They've been incredible taking care of the football. Just one turnover all year long on offense. It, it almost seems like they can't be beaten. But... We all know on any given Saturday, anything can happen and and they can have some bad times. But on paper, they are incredible. Since the 2021 draft, Coach Poor, they've had three offensive linemen drafted. So they've always been big up front and you intermix in with their tight ends and their fullbacks. It may not be a gap power constantly 90 percent of the time like it was under Craig Bull when he started, but they're still very effective. As Mike said, they possess the football. That's the biggest kind of change, so to speak, that you see with Polisek is they are much more of a true zone team, but it's there. It's still in that package because uh, for years it's they would close games out, like yeah. basically eat the whole second half up running tight A gap power. And, and, the, and the scary thing about that is they're so good at that, that however you try and counter it with getting more people to the box and then they'll you know, they'll run one of those big fullbacks right by you, you know, down the chute. And that's that's the tough part schematically about stopping them is you have to beat them. And I think the biggest thing is you got to win at the point of attack and make them go to play play B, you know, and something that can't, well, they're stopping this. We got to go to this. And that gets them a little bit out of their comfort zone. And uh, I know the year we beat them here, we did a great job of that. And, and actually did turn him over a couple times that day. Raja Nelson has been out with injuries so far this year. He did make a return last week for the Bison. Braylon Henderson as well has missed some time, which that's opened the door for some receivers, Mike True. And who else than Trey Lance's brother, Bryce Lance? He's having a heck of a season so far. Yeah, you knew when you see the name Lance that there had to be some connection. And and uh, he's getting a lot of attention. He's He leads them in receptions. But Raja Nelson is a guy who just torched the Salukis a year ago at North Dakota State and just seemed to get open whenever he wanted. To. He seems to be getting healthy, and I look for him to be back in the lineup, although he's not listed as you know one of their, even in, in their two deep, which is kind of unusual, but I fear Raja Nelson, and you cannot forget the tight ends. You forget the tight ends, and they're going to get open on a seam, and, and Cam Miller with his play action. The running game is so good that you have to respect it, and then when you bite on it, you linebackers get caught up and the lineback and the the tight ends get open behind him for another big gain. Kim Miller of course is so good at running the football but they also have some really good running backs too as well coach poor what stood out about their running back room I know Shamar Brown had a really big day just last week against North Dakota but TK Marshall Penn knew they got multiple guys that they can really throw out there. Well they know that system so well and they're talented and they're they play to the philosophy of that offense. They always finish runs downhill. They're very physical and they don't miss cuts and they, they read things really well and they're disciplined. It's like if this play is supposed to attack the B gap, that's the point of entry, that, that's by gosh where they're going to enter it. And, and and a lot of trust that you can tell those backs, they all play with the confidence of being in that offense. You know, they, they, they know that they can get four yards and then it's eventually four yards, four yards, and then they pop one, you know, and they just kind of grind on you. Switching over defensively, Code Green is what they call that unit. Even though Coach Polisek, an offensive-minded coach, they've been good under first-year defense coordinator Grant Olson, who was an All-American linebacker, national champion for the Bison back in his playing days for Coach Craig Bowl. Eli Mostart, that's really where it starts. Coach Hill loves his motor. And they've also been without a key defensive player in Cole Wisniewski. Yeah. And Sam Young's done a great job in filling in really for his role. He has. I, I, I kind of put Mostart 
in a Ben Bogle type category in that the motor is just always going, yet he's on the defensive line with Dylan Hendricks. So for them, it starts on that line. You've got two of their guys that are just phenomenal at getting into gaps. They don't have a lot of sacks, just 10 for the year. They don't turn people over tremendously, but as Pat mentioned, they just don't do anything wrong defensively. Count this year and you look over the last four years combined, plus 44 in turnover margin is what North Dakota State is. That just shows you how good they have been. But Coach Boar, as you mentioned, Southern, even though 2-12 and 12 against the Bison since they've joined the league, one of those wins was in the spring season. It was here at Saluki Stadium. The Bison had that record-winning streak coming in. So Southern's been doubted in this game before. No question they're going to be doubted this weekend with a true freshman starring at quarterback in Jake Curry. How do you block all of that noise out and just focus on your game plan and try to execute the way you can execute? You have to go into it with that mindset that it's going to be a 60-minute game. You're going to have to beat them, and you're going to have to do a great job of doing the things you need to do against them. And one of those things is on defense. You have to spike those zone schemes. You, you've got to get some knockback. you got to get up the field and create some, some bad reads for the backs. And then you got you got to just really trust your eye discipline in the back end because they're super good at hand the ball off, hand the ball off, hand the ball, and all of a sudden, whoop, there goes the tight end leaking down the middle. And and they, they are a little bit more, again, under Polisak, they're a little bit more multiple. You, you know, they're in a little bit more spread, and the guys that you alluded to, you know, have kind of become weapons. So the blueprint it changed a little bit because you used to be able to just, hey, we can stop the run and, you know, keep everything in front of us and not give them the explosives. That was a pretty good blueprint. And then, and then offensively, you just got to come out and, you know, execute and stay out of those bad, you know, you alluded to the turnovers. They put a lot of people in third and longs, and that creates a lot of those turnover down and distance situations that they're so good at. And you don't want to just make it this simplistic, Mike, but for the dogs to have success on Saturday, you feel they got to get off to a good start. Southern has the games they've trailed at halftime, they haven't won this year. The games they have led at halftime, they have won. It's not as simplistic as that, but getting off to a good start with oh, a homecoming crowd, trying to get that energy level high here at Saluki Stadium is going to be really important. Oh, I think it is. You, you don't want to get down. 14 points to this team early in the ball game because again the way they can possess the ball pat mentioned it they can literally eat up an entire quarter or go on an eight or nine minute drive which means you might get one or two possessions in that quarter so southern's going to have to be effective when they have the ball they're going to have to be able to turn the field over and at least make their drives a lot tougher but on offense salukis have to be crisp they've got to be they've got to protect the young quarterback because who knows what they're going to throw at him and things that he hasn't seen even on film and it's going to be one of those days where things have to click really well for the Salukis and keep it a one or two possession game into that fourth quarter to give yourself a chance to have that ability. Well if Southern gets their first Valley win on Saturday it's going to be a memorable one against number two North Dakota State. We hope to see you here tomorrow for homecoming. Kickoff is at two o'clock. Our coverage begins on the Saluki radio network at one o'clock. For my part Partners, Pat Poor, Mike Trude, I am Luke Martin. We will see you tomorrow, Saluki Nation, here for homecoming against the Bison. Go dogs!